folks, Big Woodsman here. Today we're going to be taking an older style shotgun and we're going to be retrofitting it into an absolute beautiful deer slug gun. So stay tuned and let's see what we get into. So here's the gun we're going to be rebuilding today. We've got a Mossberg 500. We've got a light colored wood stock and 4N. It's already been redone once. I did it 20 years ago. I've had this gun for well over 30 years now. It's been an absolute workhorse for me. I do love shooting it, so it's time to give it a facelift. We've got a 30 inch vent rib barrel, and we're going to be changing that over to a 26 inch slug barrel. We're going to be using this for deer hunting come this fall. Here's some of the pieces that I'm going to be adding on to this gun. So the first thing I did to this firearm years ago was replace the tank safety. The original one was plastic, it cracked, allowed the mechanism inside the gun to pivot, which you could not take the safety off. So I went and machined a small one here out of brass. Now online you can find them all over the place and you can get them in billeted aluminum. So first thing I would do, if you have a plastic one, take it off, throw it away, put one of the new metal ones on. When the shot counts, the last thing you want is for that safety not to work. So that's the number one thing I would do. So the next step we're gonna do, we're gonna check. We've made sure it's unloaded. Everything is completely clean, clear, unloaded. We're gonna remove our barrel. So the nut that's right here, if for some reason it's really sticky and you have to use anything other than your hands, remember, wrap that in leather, cloth, anything. Do not grab it with metal pliers. As I've said in other videos, metal on metal, you're gonna ruin the finish. It's gonna be a spot where rust is gonna start. In this case, we've had this barrel off a lot, so it just unscrews easy. Now we're going to take the original barrel and we're going to set it aside. Next order of business, we're going to remove our magazine tube. Now these, if you haven't had these off before, these are going to be extremely difficult. Same thing, you're going to have to wrap this, you're going to have to get pliers, get a good grip on this. But if it's been off before, you should be able to just unscrew it. Relatively simple. And then the whole thing slides right out. Take that magazine, set that aside. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take off the stock. And by taking off the stock, we have to unscrew this ring right here. Now, once again, metal on metal is never a good idea. So you remember that comb that you had in your back pocket when you were in high school? That plastic comb fits in those notches absolutely perfectly and just spin away. Plastic on metal, you're not gonna do any damage to that ring. And then once it's loose, just unscrew it and set it aside. Now to get the fore end off, this may require a bit of persuasion. So if you have to, Get yourself a rubber mallet, get yourself a dead blow. You can tape the edge of this and you can just tap away on it so that way you're not gonna do any damage on your wood. In this case, we're gonna spin it and work it back and forth. There you have it, fore end removed. Now, while you have this off, you might as well go ahead, clean this up. If there's any rust, deal with any rust issues on it, clean up the threads and make that ready to go for the new synthetic stock. So here's our new synthetic stock by Hogue. So you can see here we've got a nice buttstock piece. We have our molded, custom molded end, and it gives you a new washer for the main bolt. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to install the end first and then I'll show you how to do the buttstock. 
So now that we have our tube and our four in completely cleaned up, lubed, it's just a matter of sliding the new one right over top. Wow, that went on really easily. So now that we have that on, all we have to do is screw on our ring again, our keeper ring. Now remember when ordering these stocks, Hogue does have, the newer shotguns have a smaller magazine tube up here. So remember if you need to, you're going to have to get an extension piece that goes on this ring. So just pay attention, measure your shotgun before you order it so that way you're getting the right part. But they do make adapter rings if for some reason you don't have the right length. Now it's just a matter of screwing that back on. Screwing it in until it's tight. Once it gets relatively tight, don't forget, use your high school comb and tighten that right back up again. Works fantastic. They do make wrenches for this, but get yourself to the dollar store. There you are, tight and installed. So the next thing we're gonna replace is the stock. And in order to get the stock off, we have to expose a giant bolt that's in the end here. So the butt plate has two screws. They're Phillips screws. So if you get your number two Phillips screwdriver, it just goes right in those rubber holes. You'll feel it connect to the screw and then just unscrew those screws. There you have it, very simple. And there it exposes the giant bolt hole. Now here's where the fun start. The bolt that screws into the bottom of the gun comes straight through the stock and it stops right about here. It's just a straight screwdriver top, but as you can see, you've got a long distance of your stock in order to get that screw out. So you're going to require one of these, a massive screwdriver, because it's got to reach all the way up into here to reach that bolt. So this could be the only tool that you may have to purchase in order to get your stock apart if you don't have a giant screwdriver. So let's go ahead and let's see if we can remove that. As you can see, there's not a whole lot of screwdriver left on that to get that bolt out. And there is the bolt, as you can see. Comes through quite a distance, so you need that full length of screwdriver to get that out. We're going to take that, set that aside. That's the old wooden stock. And we're going to keep it all together. If we ever want to put it back together, we certainly can. Now, as you can see, they gave us a new washer for the end of this bolt. So it has a lock washer in it, but it also comes with a nice new flat washer. Now we can go ahead, retrofit this right onto the end, put our bolt back in, and screw it into place. Nice fit. Now comes the fun part, hitting that hole. And there we are.
have it. So when putting your magazine back in, you can see on the end of your magazine, you've got the spring-loaded plunger piece. If you do not set that in with your finger while trying to insert this and screw it in place, it's gonna bind on you because that catches on the actual gun receiver itself. So slide it in. And once you get it aligned, push it in with your finger push that magazine piece in and then you can screw in your barrel. Once you get a few threads in, you can let that drop back out. Give her a twist hand tight. We're not going to wrench that down because someday we may have to take it back apart again. Magazine tube is on. Action slides. So let's fit our barrel. So here's our new 26 inch slug barrel. synthetic stock installed with 26 inch slug barrel so if you're gonna go deer hunting that's really all you would need but we're gonna add on a few extras to this guy so the next thing we're gonna be mounting on this gun is gonna be our scope mount our solid aluminum scope mount from Sun Optics so let's go ahead let's pull this out and see what it looks like Retainer bolt, a couple of Allen keys to install, some quick installation instructions on how to put it on, and the actual solid aluminum body with full weaver mount on the top so it'll adapt to just about any scope out there. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove this screw out of the actual scope mount and they give you the allen key in the packaging for this. We're going to set that aside because we're going to need that. Set our scope mount aside. The next thing we need to do is remove this ejector screw from its keeper. So we have the outside and we've got the ejector screw on the inside. So we're going to set those two aside for now is the next thing we need to do is remove the ejector screw from inside the action. Hopefully you can see this, but there's a straight slotted screw just inside the action. We have to remove that and we're going to replace it with this new one they gave us, which is gonna stick out the backside of this gun. So with our screwdriver, we set it in our ejector screw there it is, as you can see, it's a very short, very small screw. We don't need that anymore because we're going to replace it with this guy with the Allen key. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to set that in there and we're going to install. As you can see, it sticks out the backside, but that's where this keeper nut will eventually screw onto to hold our scope mount. So the next thing we have to do is remove the gun's trigger plate pin. 
So in the gun is this pin right here. And all this is is a push pin that goes right through the gun. So taking a small drift, taking a small screwdriver, push that pin so it comes out the other side. Be mindful that your trigger mechanism doesn't come out because all we're doing is removing that. And when we put this piece over top, we are gonna set it back in with this screw. But we're gonna come in from the other side. We have to make sure that that little slot drops over that screw head though, most important. Because once you get this pin in, you won't be able to adjust. Using our Allen key. Tighten in. Last step is to screw our keeper post onto this outside screw. And it just stops this um, scope plate from wobbling, keeps it nice and locked down. And that's it. Scope plate is locked. Ejector port is still wide open. We still have our ejector plate screw mounted. It's nice and solid with our outside cap. Everything's solid, trigger mechanism is still solid in, stock mounted. So here's our Bushnell red dot sight. Nice simple manual, easy installation. Features, register for warranty. Here's our Allen key that we're going to need in order to install it. We have a nice cleaning cloth that comes with it. And the scope itself shipped in a pretty nice packaging. And here's our red dot scope. Rubberized lens caps. Mm, very nice. 11 intensity displays on off. Adjustments for elevation, height, and wind. So let's go ahead and let's mount this. So here's our red dot scope. In order to mount this onto the Weaver rail, we have to remove the locking screw that's on the side. Now as you pull that screw out, be careful. The retaining clip on the other side has two little springs in it and we want to make sure we don't lose those springs. Easy to do. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to slide this over top of our weaver rail. And before we lock this down, we're going to set our eye relief. So if you're not sure how to set your eye relief, go and watch one of my other videos on installing a scope on your gun. It explains how to set your eye relief so this is properly set for you. So in this case, I'm going to set it where it's right for me. And then we're going to lock it down with this pin and the um, set screw with the springs on the other side.
with your Allen key, go ahead and tighten it down. So there you have it, red dot scope mounted on your Weaver or Picatinny rail, the scope mounts mounted through your shotgun, synthetic stock, and there we have it, complete retrofitted upgrade. I can't wait to use this. So now all we have to do is take it out to the range, set the wind, set the elevation, and away we go. So a quick overview on what we've done. We've removed the wooden stock and we've put on a fully synthetic stock with rubberized grip. Now it doesn't matter if it rains, snows, anything. This gun is nicely weatherproof and very easy to clean. We've taken off the original 30 inch um, barrel and we've put on a 26 inch slug barrel. With that we've also added a Sun Optics scope mount and Bushnell red dot sight. I'll have links to all these products in the comment if you want to pick them up for your gun. Highly recommended. I'm looking forward to taking this out onto the range, putting some shots through it and seeing how accurate it is. So we've taken an old 30 year old gun, brought it up to today's standard. Beautiful looking piece of work. So we've changed over some pieces, added some nice uh, extras to our gun. As you can see, it doesn't even look a thing like the original from when we started. I can't wait to use it this fall. These guys don't even stand a chance. So remember, there's life out there in the woods. I'll see you out there in it.